reveals the true nature of this man. And I say, in light of that revelation that this president and all future presidents must learn that they are servants of the people. God forbid that he should have one title of power except what is derived through Congress and the Constitution. Ours is not a government of kings and satraps, but a government. In the words of our beloved martyred President Lincoln, of the people, for the people, and by the people. And, and uh, if he should fail to grasp that simple principle, which was inscribed in the Constitution of the United States, Get it. Close we came back there? Oh, come on, we got away clean just like we always do. They had cops all around that square. They're on to us. Time I was on my way. What? Come on, I told you how it was gonna be. I told you I'm going west someday. I'm gonna be a cowboy. But we thought it was just talk. Start thinking different. I never heard of no colored cowboys. It's because it's different out there. Out west, the man ain't looked down on for his color. We never looked down on you, Adam. That's because you'd have been dead or jailed by now, it wasn't for me. Fine. Go ahead. I don't care. I can take care of myself just fine. Good. I will. Street. What girl? Half crazy. Try to jump on the wagon. It must be hers. Her own baby? Why? 
I know where she came from. I followed her. We could bring it back home. If she wanted it back, she wouldn't have got shut of it in the first place. At least she put a bottle of milk and some extra nappies in here. Man, he's so through. Anybody know anything about babies? I do. There was some in the orphanage. We gotta get the nappy off him. His backside will get sore. Then do it. All right. Could just leave him right here. Somebody will probably come along. We're not gonna leave him. It's a girl. You sure? I'm definitely sure. We gotta find a home for her. What? Why us? Cause we're all she's got. Can't leave her here. I ain't got time for this. I'm going west. I ain't staying in the city for no body or no baby. Oh. Never said you guys couldn't come along. That's what you decide you want to do. Thought you said it was time we all started taking care of ourselves. Well, I ain't begging you. Adam! Coppers, let's get out of here. What about the baby? Bring her. Quickly. Come on, hurry. Careful. There you are. Four tickets through to Abilene, Kansas. Boarding in 20 minutes, track two. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you, son. $65 for a train ride. Hope you realize we only got a couple hundred left. I told you. Quit worrying. Sure is a funny looking little thing, ain't she? Everything okay? No problem, Ma. Morning, boys. Where's this cute little baby's mama? That's our little sister, sir. Our mama died having her, I'm sorry to say. Where's your daddy? Papa. Rest his soul. Came down with a fever. Passed on right after Mama. Yes, sir. So now we're headed west to go live with our Auntie Prudence and her family. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I see. What's this pretty little darling's name? Mary. Rose. Uh, Mary Rose. Claiborne? Yes. And you are? I'm Adam Claiborne. Douglas Claiborne, sir. Cole Claiborne. Travis Claiborne. But Trav's fine. Son. How'd you all come to be by the same last name? Well, you see, sir, Adam here was adopted. That's right, officer. Mama and Papa took him in after Pa found him near froze to death in a snowstorm. Half starved and all pitiful like. That so? Yes, sir. Yes. You boys sure you can handle this little sweetheart? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. yes, sir. All right. If you have any problems on the train, you go straight to the conductor. You here now? Yes, yes sir. Where'd Mary come from? My mama. Don't remember much about her before she died. What about Rose? It's my mama. Mary Rose. That's a fine name. Hello, Mary Rose Claiborne. Well, if we're going west, let's get going. You think rich folks are likely to take in a strange baby? I'm gonna start asking too many questions. Gotta at least get us some boots. 
A real cowboy ain't nothing without his boots. Forget about boots. Start worrying about getting some jobs and making some money. You mean we're gonna go straight and have to work real jobs? You see all those folks wearing guns? You wanna lift a wallet off of one of them? How's Mary Rose doing? Um, she's still sleeping, but she's gonna want something to eat pretty soon. We're gonna have to get some more goat's milk. I got a better idea. Why don't we find a goat farmer to give her to? <laughs> Look, what about those ladies? <laughs> oh, I did. You fool. We have to pick somebody. That was the deal, right? Wasn't it? Shut up, Trav. I ain't seen no colored cowboys, Adam. You sure you got it right? I'm going to the stockyards. Hey, you watch her careful now. family on a farm just outside of town. That's Douglas and that's cool. <laughs> that's our little sister you've got there. Come on, Doug, we had a deal. Shut up. Good afternoon, everybody. Trav gave Mary Rose away to these people. Again? Ma'am, I'm real sorry about all this, but Travis here is a little off his head, always coming out with the first full thing that pops into his brain. It's been a terrible trial for all of us. And I can't imagine how his two brothers could have been so stupid and leave little Mary alone with him. Then she has a home. With a warm and loving family. As long as she's cared for, that's the important thing. Come on, children. Great, I solve our problem and what do we get? <sighs> we don't have a problem. Nice some dirt. Put the best bronc buster ever across the Red River in our direction. Hey, fellas! Fellas! Pack up. We're going to Texas. Texas? That's where all the big cattle ranches are. And where my good friend, Mr. Isom Dart, who happens to be a colored cowboy, has promised to help find us work. That's right, you smile, little Mary Rose. So we on our way. Mind how you talk now, young lady. Well, you can't. We're just tired hands around here trying to learn the ranch business. We got to get to work. Yeah! And you mind what? 
what Ms. Nelson says now. Okay. I'll see you tonight, sweetie. brothers, right? Uh-huh. He's Doug. And there's Adam, and there's Travis, and there's Cole. Except Cole ain't here, because he's a Texas Ranger. He ain't no Ranger. It is, too. Right now he's off chasing dirty gun slicks, and dry gulchers, and back shooters. I don't believe it. And another thing, Adam can't be your brother. He ain't even the right color. You so. Color don't matter. He said it don't. If he said that, he's just lying. You're a liar. I'm not a liar. Yeah, now, what's all this ruckus about? I see. Well, why don't you two share these hot cinnamon buns I just made and make friends again? Annie, what is the problem now? It's just a little spat. Annie? I've told you you're not to give the help food from the kitchen. <laughs> Mary's just a little girl. Those Clayborns are the next thing to abandon gypsies. Let them get too familiar. Next thing you know, we'll be missing things around here. Oh, uh, Annie, being kin and all, you're welcome to live here, but you must respect my wishes. I'll go back inside. I'll handle it. Playtime is over, Carrie. Mary. Mary, I want to have a word with you. Word about what, Mrs. Parker? Fighting. I have warned Mary Rose I won't have her provoking Carrie. Provoking, was it? My husband tells me you're near finished with our band of horses. Just as well. Just as well y'all be moving on. Bedtime, Mary, honey. You want to tell me what's on your mind? You know I won't be able to sleep a wink if you don't. I hate moving. I wish we didn't have to. I figured that might have something to do with it. Guess what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of a place. What kind of place? Oh, it's a fine place. It's on a hill. It's overlooking a lake. It's got plenty of good grass for cattle and flowers, too. It's going to be ours someday. Ours? All of us? That's all right, Mary, honey. We're going to build us a house of our own right there, and that's where we'll live. You and me and Cole and Doug and Trav. When? When can we go there, Adam? I ain't found it yet. See, that's why we're all working and moving around so much, so that well, we'll have the money it takes for when the time comes. You sleep tight, Mary Honey. Good night, Adam. That's quite a promise. Well, it's gonna come true for her. Oh? We ain't got near what it takes to set up a spread on our own. It'll be at least another three, four more years the way I figure it. Well, we can't wait that long. I mean, Mary will be grown up before we know it. Maybe you heard they hit gold up in Montana territory. Are you thinking about taking up prospecting? Well, miners get hungry. Hungry for beef. And I hear the grass up that way is free for the claiming. Travis! Cole. Douglas! 
Whoa. Now ain't this here a surprise? <laughs> Mary Rose, you come away from here now. Don't you be looking at that. Dad, I want you to quit right now. Somebody kills you. Mary, Mary. Look, Mary, this badge here has paid good, hard money for a long time. All right, money we all needed here. But I'm all finished with that now. So I want you to keep this for me. That's yours. Where's Adam? Montana territory, scouting the country for grass. trouble for giving me them buns? She did. Oh, come on. F, Q? No, that's a G. That there's a Q with a little squiggly thing. How do you know? Because I learned to read a long time ago. Who are you? Oh, Mary, honey, I mostly learned myself. Now, quit changing the subject. F, G, H, I. You want to know what happened to Ms. Nelson's face? She told you? We talk a lot. It was during the war. She said the soldiers killed her husband and her two little kids. They burnt out their place. Her in it. But she got out. That's sad. I'm back to work. J, K, L, M. Then she had to come out here and live with her brother. But I don't think she's very happy. I think she'd like to get away from that mean Miss Parker. Now you just hold your horses, Mary Rose Claiborne. Now, I'd like to help Miss Nelson, too, but... Well, we just don't have any room on the wagon for anybody else. Mary Rose, now I told you that... There is so room. Has there been some misunderstanding? From what Mary said, I've... See? It ain't fancy, Miss Nelson. I don't need fancy, Mr. Claiborne. I need a family again. Rose Hill, Mary. We're home. Come on, let's go. Easy, easy. 
Easy. Easy. Whoa. Whoa. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Sam. What are you boys up to? Don't mind my inquiry. Today's Miss Mary's birthday. I come to pay my respect. Uh, same. And I got here first. If you got first dibs, why didn't you ride on in? I got my reasons. Why don't you? All the Claibornes is home, are they? Yeah, all of them. One or two of them Claibornes is bad enough, watching every move a man makes around Miss Mary. But all four... <laughs> well, I'll tell Miss Mary Rose you're a roosin' down here. Maybe she'll send you all a piece of cake or something. <laughs> Come on, boys. Well, now, <laughs> Miss Mary. You gonna join us for Mary Rose's birthday party, Mr. Bates? Well, I was wondering how long it was gonna take for somebody to ask. <laughs> now, I got all the merchandise you folks ordered, and I got something real special for you, Miss Mary. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's a couple of boys, Sam Tucker and Charlie Orr. They's counting their chickens down by the fort. I uh, expect they might enjoy an invite. Well, I guess we better go talk to them then. Cole, don't you dare. Don't you worry about a thing, Mary. I'm always real polite with you, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on inside and make yourself at home, Mr. Bates. We'll be sitting down to supper directly. Oh! Oh! Mary! Where is your mind today? Might as well have a man in the kitchen. Somebody would fix that. married before you came to live with us what was it like when i was married that was a long time ago if you don't want to talk about it well i don't know what to tell you i had a wonderful marriage you know but a marriage isn't just one thing at first when it's just the two of you Everything's all sweet and rosy. Then the babies start to come along. You have to think about the future. I'm starved. <laughs> what is for supper? Oh, oh Nat. Cole, where are the boys? What boys? Oh, yeah, them two up the road there. Turns out they had a pressing engagement elsewhere. Oh! What's wrong? Didn't you have a good time? Wonderful. The only man I got to dance with on my birthday was either my brother or fat cow bait. I'm not a child, and they all still keep treating me like one. That's because you let them. Do not. Mary. Those boys treat you the way they have always treated you since you were a little girl. And you love it. Well, you should. Bless them. They threw up a protective circle around you that no harm could ever get through. You know, but you're a young woman now. It's time you begin to step out of that circle, become your own person. 
I am my own person. I know you believe that. I think you still have a ways to go. I didn't get a chance to give you this earlier. This was from your husband. That part of my life is over. You've given me a new life. I want you to take it, Mary Rose. I think it's time we told her the truth. She knows enough for now. I'm not sure how to tell Mary about her real mother abandoning her. Back of a garbage wagon. We don't know for sure it was her real mother. You sure you're not just afraid she might find out she has a real family somewhere? This is her real family. Short-handed here, mister. Care to sit in? Ah, why not? Foreigner, huh? Aye. Fergus Carroll's the name. From Edinburgh, Scotland. Well, that ugly critter sitting next to you is Charlie Trent. Aye. That's Wilbur Trueblood. Ernie Hauser. Howdy. And I'm Travis Claiborne. Pleased to meet you, Fergus. Claiborne. You wouldn't happen to know a Mr. Cole Claiborne. That's my brother. What's your business with him? Might I have a word in private with him, Mr. Claiborne? It's not my custom to interfere with another man's business, but when I overheard those two suggest they had a job at Kilman to do well. Really? You should have from Texas. If my geography serves me, Fort Worth was last situated there. Yeah. Does your brother attract this kind of attention often? Often enough, yeah. Come on, Cole, we got a problem. Adam, we need to talk. Outside. And who might this be? A uh, friend of mine, Fergus Carroll. Fergus is my brother Adam, my sister Mary Rose. A uh, pleasure, Mr. Mr. Claiborne. What's wrong, boys? It's nothing for you to worry about. Why don't you just stay here and keep Mr. Carroll company? Cole. Do as he says, Mary, honey. Come on, boys. Well, then maybe you'd care to explain, Mr. Carroll. Well, uh... Never mind. I know it's some kind of trouble. Oh, they make me so mad. I'm sure they're only trying to protect you, miss. I don't need protect... Protect me from what, Mr. Carroll? Well, if, as you suggest, there's some sort of trouble... <clears throat> well, um... Miss <clears throat> Claiborne, uh... Travis tells me that you and your brothers have a ranch. Uh, coincidentally, I happen to have an interest in the cattle business myself. You? I. You a broker? Shipper, then? No, as a matter of fact. <sighs> hush! Miss Claiborne, I'm not accustomed to being told hush. There's going to be a fight. I told you to wait inside. Do you hear me, young lady? I said wait inside! I'm obliged, Mr. Carroll. Things come down. You come out and visit the Rose. We'll show you a real work in cattle ranch. Oh, that's quite kind of you, sir.
You just had to run off and join the Rangers. Uh, Miss Claiborne, I'm, I'm sure that your brothers are more than capable of handling themselves. I hear you two men are looking to do business with Cole Claiborne. Well, that'd be me. And my name is Adam Claiborne. And that's Douglas. And that's Travis. They're Claibornes too. Gentlemen, you got business with one. You got business with all. I want to know what happened. Is there any killing? Nope. Didn't have to, not after Adam blew a hole in the bar with that 12 gauge. Look, we just took him out back, had a little chat with him, and sent him back on the same stagecoach they come in on. Who were they? Hired trash. What? You really want to know? I mean, hearing about it's going to make you feel all grown up, right? It was some old business left over from Texas. In those days, rangers weren't much for courts and judges and whatnot. You caught a man red-handed and there was a big enough tree close by, a bullet if there wasn't. Well, enough of that kind of justice and sooner or later somebody's gonna make a mistake. Is that why you quit the rangers? I remember that day. The dead man in the wagon. See a mistake? I thought you quit because you knew I wanted you to. Those men today. That's the past. Can't be buried, Mary Rose. As much as a person might wish it could. Mary Rose? Just that foreigner from town I told you about. <laughs> Would you look at him? Oh. Good morning, Mr. Carroll. Uh, Miss Claiborne. Did you bring that hat all the way from Scotland? <laughs> I, by the way, of Cape Town, Sydney, and a few other stops along the way. Goodness, all those places. Guess you're some kind of tourist. Well, better take real good care of that hat. Doubt you'll find any more like it around here. Mm, so I've noticed. Oh, welcome to the Rolls, Mr. Carroll. I was wondering when we might see you again. Mr. Claiborne. Come in. I represent a group of Edinburgh financiers who have formed an investment pool. We intend to establish a, a cattle station here, uh, which I shall operate. Cattle station? I heard of train stations and police stations. Don't pay any attention to Trav, Mr. Carroll. He's not quite as ignorant as he seems sometimes. Mm. So have you uh, found yourself some likely grass? I, I think so. I on the mussel shell uh, above Clark's Crossing. More coffee, Mr. Carroll? Thank you. And since we're going to be neighbors, my name is Fergus. Better last your first winter before you call yourself a neighbor, Mr. Carroll. Mm. There has a point. This is hard country. He's handsome. Carries himself well. I hadn't noticed. He's noticing you. Man doesn't know what he's doing. Show him up, spin him out. Take all of his money for the trouble. You had any experience, Mr. Carroll? I'm not here, of course. Uh, but my investors have uh, holdings in South Africa and Australia where I served my apprenticeship. Of course, I studied animal husbandry at the University of Edinburgh. But, but I must say, uh, I'm worried about all the overgrazing I'm seeing here. And with more cattle coming in every year, well, frankly, I believe the lands are being mismanaged. 
Miss Maddox. I don't think so. Mr. Claiborne, the nutrition quality of the grasslands here are as fine as anywhere in the world. But unless the, the soil base is allowed to replenish itself... The point is, Mr. Carroll, this range isn't being managed at all. It's free range. Free range for free men. That's why many of us came here. And it always will be. Well, perhaps I spoke too quickly. Now you come and see us again, Mr. Carroll. Thanks, I shall. And I look forward to returning the hospitality. Don't forget, Mr. Carroll. Take good care of that hat. You just leave him alone. <laughs> Where are your people, huh? Yeah, I bet you wouldn't mind watching me take an arrow on the back now, would you? Come on. Clayborne? Sir? I'm John Stringer. I'm sorry, ma'am, but your brother's been shot. Cole, help me. Oh, when the game broke up, it turned out Cole and me were riding in the same direction. And where would that be? Uh, me and my partners are camped up on the Little Bell. Ow. Anyway, when we crossed onto your grass, Cole found a fresh trail. It was rustlers, three of them. Already taken uh, half a dozen steer, judging from the tracks. And they got wind of us somehow, opened up on us. That's when Cole got hit. I thought he was a goner, but he come up shooting. We backed our way out of there. He's a game one. We appreciate what you did, Mr. Stringer. And you're welcome at the Rose anytime. Well, I'd like to ride along, show you where it happened. We'll find it. Be careful. from, Mr. Stringer? Oh, here and there. Kansas lately. I mean, where were you born? Tennessee. Yourself? New York City, I think. <laughs> it's a long story. How'd you know my name when you wrote in? Well, truth is, Cole kept going on and on about his kid sister, Mary Rose, the whole time. Mary Rose this, Mary Rose that. The only one reason I went is I figured if he... Went off and got killed, I'd never get to meet the famous Mary Rose. Well, I hope this'll do for you tonight. This'll do fine. Good night, Miss Claiborne. Night. Stop. No. No. Shh. 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 Cole. Cole. Shh. 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 Okay. Now stay with me. Yeah, stay with me now. This is the tricky part. That's where it all gets dangerous. Oh. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> 
Beautiful. Don't forget about your feet. Not so hard, huh? Mary Rose? Douglas, Trav. How's Cole? His fever broke this morning. He's gonna be all right. I was just seeing Mr. Stringer off. I was just, uh, showing Mary Rose a sashay. <laughs> On your way, were you? Yes, I was. We won't keep you. Good afternoon, Miss Claremont. I hope we'll be seeing more of you, Mr. Stringer. I'd like that very much. Gentlemen. Didn't even come close. Lost him at the river. Claiborne. Mr. Carroll, I almost didn't recognize you without your fancy hat. Ah, I've since retired the hat, Miss Claiborne. It seemed to attract a totally unreasonable amount of attention. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? Busy. I seem to have been remiss in calling on Cole. How is he? Already up and around. He's chomping at the bit to get after the men who shot him. I can imagine. Uh, shall I see you and your brothers at the Independence Day celebration this weekend? Wouldn't miss it on a bet. I thought I might ask Miss Claiborne if I might escort you to the dance. I don't know. Nobody's had the nerve to ask me to a dance before. Well, that's all. Um, perhaps you'd like a little time to think about it. I think that's a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Listen. Where have you been? Shopping. Mr. Carroll. Will he? It's morning, Miss Claiborne. John. Here Cole's back on his feet. Sure, to send him my best. I'll do that. So there's a dance coming up, Miss Claiborne. You've been practicing that step I showed you. I might need another lesson. Oh. Well, I count on seeing you there then. Unless you've got other plans. No. Good. Mary Rose. You might be a little more sociable. Hardly said a word to John. I promised Annie I'd bring her some back lemon. I won't be long.
It's the Shining Water. She's Shoshone. But she got no people left. She's coming to live on the Rose. Where'd she come from? Well, there's no room for her here. Well, she's taking Adam's room. Adam says he'll sleep in the barn. Move out? You can't do that. Just till they build a place of their own. You were just complaining there ain't no room. Oh, Lord, it ain't a mystery. Adam's in his prime. She's a pretty young thing. You think she's pretty? Yes, she is, kind of. I know, it's hard, John. You've had all Adam's attention to yourself all this time. Now a young woman comes along. But he doesn't know her. He doesn't even speak the same language. She's just using him because she's got no place to live. Now, shame on you. Now, a little happiness is hard enough to come by in this world. You begrudge it to someone who hasn't done a thing in his life but love and care for you. You're a spoiled thing, Mary Rose. You're a family member. Why don't you start over there? Sit down and join us, Fergus. Thanks. Miss Claiborne? <laughs> Mr. Carroll? You look scrumptious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I uh, hear that new place of yours is coming along just fine, Fergus. Indeed, indeed. The main house is almost finished. Hope to be able to entertain all of you there in the near future. I'm sure we look forward to it. Has Adam come to town? Adam has other things on his mind these days than the 4th of July. Uh, Travis? Oh, he probably got roped into a card game. He'll be along when he gets hungry enough. Oh, excuse me, I believe I see a friend of mine. Be sure to ask John if he's hungry. Tell him we've got plenty. What's that about? Mary... You know, there's been a lot of beef stolen around here lately. I was going to tell you the other day, rumor is John's had a partner. No. No, John Stringer is not a rustler. Look what he did for Cole. Look. I'm just telling you what people are saying. Mary Rose? John. Well, John, this is Fergus Carroll. Fergus, this is John Stringer. Looking forward to meeting you, Mr. Stringer. Hey, you're the Scotty. Well, with all the foreign ideas and how the cattle business ought to be running around here. Aye, some are beginning to listen. Early now. Mary Rosa can't stay. I want to thank you for the invite, though. You know you're always welcome, John. How many head are you grazing up there, Mr. Stringer? About 5,000. Not much compared to your operation, but we're proud of it. We'll see you at the dance later, Mary Rose. Yes. Good. Nice to meet you. Five 
5,000 head. Stocked up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Doug, stop it. You don't know the first thing about him. Ready, the truth is nobody does. He comes from Tennessee and Kansas and... No one knows where his money comes from or how he comes by his stock. I'm sure Douglas is only trying to protect you. Protect me. Look, I've had enough protection from the both of you. I've lost at least 200 head myself. I know others that have lost more. A federal marshal in Great Falls might as well be on the bloody moon. And the army, they're of no use at all when it comes to cattle wrestlers. It's time we acted on our own. I'm in a hard place, Fergus. He's Cole's friend. And any fool can see how Mary Rose feels about him. Douglas, these thieves have to be stopped. Caught in the act and dealt with. I'm going to offer a $5,000 reward for the right piece of information. It's a lot of money. True, but I don't have time to haggle. Take them to miss you. My brothers? <laughs> don't mind them. I don't. They just haven't faced the fact that I'm not a little girl anymore. Don't you agree? I agree. They're gonna hit Ben Hauser's place tomorrow night. Who are they? My informant gave no names. Adam, will you and your brothers ride with us? Yeah, we will. Coming in from the south. You ready? Let's go. You men, stop where you're at. Throw down your weapons. Your help. What happened? 
Night Riders come after me and my partner, claiming we've been stealing cattle. It's lies. Mary, I made a run for it, but they're right behind me. I don't know how far they are, and I need a fresh horse. Mine's nearly done in. John, my brothers rode out tonight. They were wearing hoods. I couldn't see who they were. Will you come back? I don't think so. Take me with you. I can't. I'm sorry. I'll send for you. I promise. Five minutes, Mary. Give me five minutes to get saddled. That's all I need. Go. Mary Rose, what are you doing out here? I couldn't sleep. I was worried. Where's Adam and Cole? Miss Claiborne, has anyone been here tonight? What do you mean? I think that's a simple enough question. I better check the barns. We tracked one of the rustlers down this way. Lost him in the creek bottom. Mary, I think it's John Stringer. No, couldn't have been. He wasn't, he wasn't. Travis, hey, Travis. Waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. A man would give all the substance of his house for love, and would utterly be condemned. Amen. know the pain you're feeling. It's the same for your brothers. It will pass. Mary Rose, how's she taking it? Travis and Douglas both love you, and that's the important thing. Any news of Stringer? That's what I've come to tell you about. He made a run for the Badlands. We caught up to him. Yesterday morning, the other side of Crow's Landing. Stringer reached for his gun and I shot him. No! 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 Are you crying for him? For Stringer? He promised to send for me! Ah! Ain't this family been hurt enough? A family? This isn't a family! You made it up! And I don't belong here. Rose Hill, all of it. You never told me the truth about my real family. Mary! You want to know the truth about your real family? Then it's time you should know. All I can tell you is what Cole told me. The day we stole that wagon with you in it, there was a girl. She was carrying on. She tried to stop us, but there was no stopping us with the cops on our tail. Cole followed her back to where she came from. Mary, honey, I, I have to figure that's where you come from, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Cole said it was a big place down in the Battery. He remembered because it was just a few blocks up Maple Street from Purdy's Pawn Shop, where we did a lot of business back in those days. Oh. He said there was a, a fountain in front of the house with one of them little baby angels off to one side. But that was a long time ago, Mary Rose. Everything could have changed by now.
Yes. Is Mr. Elliot in, please? I'm Richard Elliot. Who are you? My name is Mary Rose Claiborne. I'm looking for my family. I think you better come inside. Who is she? That's uh, my wife, Helen. Your um, remarkable resemblance to her is why I brought you into my house. Where is she? She's dead. She um, died almost seven years to the day since our daughter was lost. It's our daughter, Victoria. She was um, kidnapped when she was four months old. She would be uh, just 19. Sorry. It was a long time ago. Helen and I had gone out for supper earlier in the evening, and uh, when we got back, Maud had, um, that was the woman that you met at the door. Maud had already discovered that Victoria was missing and had uh, called the police. There was a girl, someone who worked here. How would you know that? I knew someone who saw her. There was a girl, a servant girl named Gwen, who we'd, um, had to fire a couple of weeks earlier for stealing silver. I mean, obviously we uh, suspected her, but then she uh, disappeared. Anyway, the uh, <clears throat> police told us to expect a ransom note. Uh, as you would imagine, I was prepared to pay any amount, but the, um, the note never came. So finally, we were forced to accept the idea that something um, terrible had gone wrong and that uh, Victoria was dead. So, that's my story, Mary Rose. I think you better tell me yours. <laughs> Where's the Major? He's in the drawing room. He has a visitor. Oh? Good Lord, Maud. You look as though somebody put salt in your pudding. <laughs> Ignore him, Maud. Oh, who's the visitor? Harrison, come in. There's somebody I'd like you to meet. Uh, this is Harrison, Victoria's brother, and his wife, Emily. This is Mary Rose Claiborne. She's come to this house all the way from Montana to find her family. Oh, hello. It's obvious she's a gold digger. Please don't tell me you believe she's Victoria. I don't know. I do believe her story. At least I believe it until it's proven that I shouldn't. Father. Assuming, for a charitable moment, that everything she says is true, it still doesn't mean she's Victoria. She has only a second-hand account of an incident 18 years old. And somehow, after all this time, she stumbled onto you. A golden opportunity. And the resemblance? How do you account for that? She is after the money. Harrison, whether you uh, understand this or not, this is something that I have to pursue. I suppose. Why must you invite her to stay here? Well, if she is a hoax, then the quickest way to find her out is to have her here where I can watch her. Don't you agree? The guest room. I've been badgering Richard to let me in here to redecorate, but he's been on an economy binge lately. Well, it'll have to do, I'm afraid. I've never seen anything so fancy. No, I never was cut out to punch cows. There's too much hard work in it. Uh, you'll be back. I know you will. Goodbye, Adam. You take care of them. I'm gonna miss you, Annie. Especially them sourdoughs. Don't know who you got to left to boss around. Gotta go out and get yourself a lazy dog. Maybe I will. Be careful.
snow owl. I heard of them, but I never seen one. The people call it Kisene Ueo. It means it blows cold. Telegram. It's from the investigators you sent to Montana. <clears throat> Inquiry Mary Rose Claiborne. Confirm Rose Hill. Confirm brothers Adam, Douglas, Travis Claiborne. Confirm deceased brother Cole Claiborne. Still investigating outlaw John Stringer deceased. Details to follow. Hmm. Outlaw. I'd say the plot thickens. When are you going to confront her with this? I'm going to confront her with anything, Harrison. Much of this she's already told me. Emily has taken a great liking to Mary Rose, hasn't she? seen it this bad so early. Saddle on it. I would. Besides, I have a suspicion that they're going to have to get used to you. Richard, I don't even know if I belong here. Smile. Introduce you to some of the people. Mr. Danvers. Uh, I'd like you to meet Mary Rose from Montana. It's his wife. Meet you, Mary Rose. time in the front room, sometimes in the back of the wagon or maybe around the campfire coming round up. Oh. Well, that just sounds charming. Mm. Miss Maud, what is it? I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What are you sorry about, Maud? Be all right. He said there'd be no harm done to you. We were just gonna hide you for a little while and, and collect the ransom and bring you right back again. And then he didn't show up when he was supposed to. And the police were coming and the wagon was right there, but but the boys, the boys came running and it was you. It was you. I'm 
Miss Victoria, I'm so sorry. He... He went away. He said he'd send for me, but he never did. He? Who are you talking about? His name was Tom Flanagan. I was in love with him, but he was just using me. Can you ever forgive me? Maud, I know what it's like to do something wrong in the name of love. I do forgive you. I think what you did caused you so much more unhappiness than it ever did me. This is the end of it. It's dead and buried forever. never called anyone father before. It's gonna take some getting used to. You sure? Oh, Victoria, thank God. Thank God. What happened between last night and this morning? I'm sorry, father. That's... That's just something I can't tell you. Things you've missed. Oh, it makes me so angry. I'd have been raised in a fine home with a loving family. You'd have attended the finest schools. You'd have seen the world by now. No, Father. I was very lucky. I was raised by a family that loved me more than anything in the world. These were the very people who took you away. They didn't even try to find your family. Father, they were boys. They, they, they were running from the police. They didn't mean anybody any harm. Don't you see, Father? They gave me so much. I had the whole Wild West for a playground. And, and as for schooling, maybe it was in the back of a wagon going from camp to camp. But it was enough. At Rose Hill. The most beautiful home there ever was. I had four brothers who would do anything for me. I don't think I ever really appreciated that until now. I'm sorry. I had no idea. Perhaps if you'd like to go back there for a visit. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. But after what I did, I can never go back. That's not true. Sands or anything like this. It's ninety percent of the herd. Sure, you must go. There's nothing left to stay for. You were right. Free range is finished. What are you going to do? I'll find something. A long way from here. All right, then. Get up. Oh. 
Sade. Sade. Adam, what have you heard from Mary Rose? She writes. She found a real family. She made a choice, Fergus. That's the end of it. So good to see you. We must talk. I'd heard it was a hard winter. I, I didn't realize. By January, it was hopeless. The cattle headed down for the coolies, bunched up against the snow. But what grass there was lay under a dozen feet of snow. Starved to death by the thousands, tens of thousands from Texas to the Canadian plains. Adam and Douglas did what they could, and more, out in it for days on end. But the herd was lost. What about yourself, Fergus? Oh, I made it through, barely. But then I was better prepared than most. Mary, anyway, Douglas is gone. I don't know where he went. It ruined Adam's health. He was very ill. What about Travis? It's gone as well, in the fall before the blizzards. I heard he went down to Santa Fe to run a card parlor. But you're the one that Adam most needs to see. I should have come back a long time ago. I kept putting it off. I was afraid to face them, Adam especially. That's what Adam wants, Mary. Will you come home then? Madagascar White. I thought you said it was being stubborn. Mm -hmm. I saw you uh, talking to a man in the street. His name is Fergus Carroll. He's a friend of mine from Montana. Father, I'm going back to Rose Hill. that you'd never go back, but uh, I can't say I'm surprised. I have to. Adam's very ill. I see. The truth is I want to go back. Please don't worry. Your father, Victoria, it's my job to worry about you. Don't be hurt. You are my father. And Adam is my brother. And Travis and Douglas and, and Cole is still a part of me. And now Harrison and Emily are too. But I'm Mary Rose. Rose Hill is my home. And go back to Rose Hill, Mary Rose. Go back with my blessing.
been so long. Shining water, look at you. I must be so thrilled. Can I see him? On you. you look fine. Fine. How are you, Mary, honey? I'm home. I'm happy to be home. Lord, I wish you didn't have to see it this way. <laughs> Adam, we're going to fix it up. Fix it up just like it used to be. No, never gonna be that way again. Not like it was when we first come. Oh, when it was all so big and free. As far as the eye could see. Oh, it made a man's heart want to explode. <laughs> Adam, it's going to be better. First thing I'm going to do is help Shining Water to get you well. Then we'll all go to work on this place. And I'm going to be here when your baby's born. See what kind of daddy you're going to make. I'll do that, Mary. Send this immediately. Santa Fe Sentinel, place the following under your personal's column. Urgent Travis Claiborne, contact Rose Hill. Adam Ill, whereabouts of Douglas unknown. you coming in and it's been a pleasure Doc doesn't think he'll make it. He's got consumption. I guess we'll go see him. Wait, please. I didn't ask you to come back just to say goodbye. Lord knows I've made mistakes. And I'm sorry. But there's some other things to think about here. What do you mean? Shining Water has a baby coming. I can't let Adam go not knowing if his child has a place in this world. I want to build Rose Hill back up so Adam can see it one more time the way it was. I can't do it alone. Will you two help me?
Where do we start? I heard there's work to be had in these parts. Can't pay much. Ah, we'll work for our supper. Another one, Douglas, coming up for you. What do you think, Adam? Ranch without cattle ain't much of a ranch. They're coming. My father offered enough to get us started. You did fine, Mary, honey. You did fine. Rose Hill again, Adam. For all of us. Always. You're cool. For you. Stay. Rose Hill's as much yours as it is anybody's. It was always yours, Mary. They're the only reason there ever was for it. I'm happy you brought us back here, Mary. And I know Cole would have been proud of what you've done. Will you be back? We'll be back for Thanksgiving. You'll be happy here, Mary. place back. You saved Adam's life. Thank you for bringing me home. Oh, it wasn't only for Adam's sake that I came for you. I know. <laughs> 